everybody and welcome to our kitchen here in Brittany in northwest France. I'm Jane, I live with my husband Mike who's behind the camera, Brits, early retirees, debt and mortgage free and living a thrifty, frugal and money saving life here in France. And every Friday we open our kitchen and we cook something for you and we're doing our very best to keep to our very tight budget and every now and then, probably just like you, we need to slip in something into our weekly budget, into our weekly repertoire that's really, really cheap to keep our costs down. So let's take a look at what I've cooked for you this week. Now this week I have cooked spicy bean pasties. It's one of those recipes that's extraordinarily frugal. You could take any vegetables, either summer vegetables, winter vegetables, all those squashes in the autumn, those mushrooms, any of those things, and add it to it. You can bulk it out with beans, with white beans, with red beans, with baked beans if you're a Brit, anything like that, to pad it out and make it go further. Now, my pastry was gluten-free and I made it with chickpea flour. And it's a very reasonable alternative if you're like me and you cannot eat gluten. So without further ado, let's get baking. <laughs> Today, I'm going to make some spicy bean veggie pasties. They're also going to be gluten free because I'm going to use the gram flour. It's really hard to make a pasty with a non gluten flour, but I'm going to have a good go at this. Um, it might be more like a little squished flat pie. I'll see how they come out. But I'm basically really trying at the moment to, to use up what I've got. And I'm also gonna process this butternut squash. It sat there in my cupboard for weeks. I intend to peel it, cut it up, bag it and get it in the freezer and use some of it in these little pasties as well. So I'm gonna make as many as I can, literally from what I've got. So what I've got, butternut squash, beans, a couple of potatoes, a carrot, an onion, some tikka masala powder, some butter and gram flour for making some pastry. I'm going to saute everything in a bit of oil just to part cook it before I put it in there. And I might sweeten it up with a bit of sauce, a bit of ketchup. I might make it a bit more spicy with a bit of mustard but I'll see how I go. It's literally a make it up as I go along recipe. I just know I want the inside to be quite soft, but not mushy. So that's my plan. And I'm gonna start prepping my food. In my food processor, I have my chickpea flour. I also added in some homemade oat flour as well. I make my oat flour literally by putting oats in the food processor and whizzing it up until it is flour. I've got some cooking spread in here that's cold and hard. I've also added half a teaspoon of baking powder and half a teaspoon of xanthan gum as well and I'll probably add an egg to the water when I turn it into the dough. So I make my pastry in my food processor. So I whizzed up the ingredients in the food processor and here it is at the breadcrumb stage. I'm now gonna add liquid and I'll just use the pulse button bit by bit, and as soon as it forms one big lump, I stop. I'll take it out, uh, roll it into a ball, and I'll put it in the fridge for one hour. You always need to chill pastry. So here's my prepared vegetables. I have one 
large-ish potato, peeled and chopped, and I have about a cup full of butternut squash, peeled and chopped, one carrot, peeled and chopped, one small tin, or one regular sized tin of kidney beans, drained and rinsed, and one medium onion. And now I'm going to saute everything, except for the kidney beans, and then I will start adding seasoning to it afterwards to taste to get the level of spiciness that we like. gently brown. It's not totally cooked, it's just gently brown. In here I have half a teaspoon of garlic powder, a heaped tablespoon of tikka curry powder. You could use any spices you like. You could use chilli, you could use, I mean any spices, but I think this is a bit bland without spice. I've also got a spice mill and I've ground about a teaspoon of that into there. So I'm going to add that in and give it a good stir. Now neither Mike nor I like things too spicy, but you can this is you can add any vegetables to this, you can add any spices to this. And then I have half a cup of vegetable stock. I don't want this to be too wet, I don't want this to be mushy, but I do want it to be cooked. Here we go. I'm now going to pop the lid on that and I'm going to leave that for five minutes. I'll then check it. If it's not as I like it, I'll leave it for five minutes more. But you might like your vegetables very crispy and crunchy. I like mine to be just cooked. So you check yours every minute or two to see if they are just as you like them. There we go, I'm gonna leave this to cook for three more minutes. So that was cooked enough for me, for the way I like it, in five minutes. And you can see the liquid has been absorbed by the vegetables, but it's not dry. I'm now going to add in my beans and cook this through for another two or three minutes so the beans are all covered in the spicy flavouring too. there we are, my spicy bean filling is ready. It's, I would say, if you're cooking this, get a spoon and test it. Is it salted to your liking? Does it have enough pepper? Is it spicy enough for the way you like it? You can add anything you like to this. I would suggest adding beans to it because it's not a protein, it'll keep you full up and it's obviously very tasty. But other than that, do what you like, add what you like to it. In different types of here, you might add leeks to this, for example, or mushrooms to this. Just do what you like to it. But what I'm going to do now is I'm gonna leave this for about half an hour to cool down before I make my pasties. <music> one I've already made and it's very difficult to manoeuvre to work with gluten-free pastry so I'm going to show you how I do this. So I've got my first, I have my pastry and that was 300 grams of flour, 150 grams of vegetable fat, I blitzed it in the food processor 
I added water and egg. I had already also added half a teaspoon of baking powder and half a teaspoon of xanthan gum. So I put a little bit of gluten-free corn flour and this is baking paper. And what I do with this, because it's a bit sticky, put some flour on it, it's a bit sticky, and I roll it between the baking paper. It's a bit messy, but it does save my sanity a bit doing this, because it can get really sticky. big it is so far. Do it being a bit bigger. So try and make it round. Like I said it's really difficult to work with gluten-free pastry. So here's my spicy bean filling. A wee bit more. I like the beans. Beans are very chunky and tasty. And then I'm going to brush the eggs, the edge, with some egg. To make this vegan, instead of using egg in the pastry, you can use the aquafaba from out of the tinned beans. And then I literally just fold it over. And it's tricky and it's delicate. I didn't crimp the other one at all. I might put like a pie crust crimp on this one. If you want to know how to make proper Cornish pasties, I'll put the link to that below. But it's a good veggie one, isn't it? So I'm going to make the others now. Here's my finished pasties. I'm going to glaze them with an egg. I'm then going to put them in the fridge for an hour to cool because pastry is really better even gluten-free pastry, if it's cold with the fat really hard in it when it goes into the hot oven. I've got enough filling there left over for us to have with a little bit of lunch tomorrow, a bit of salad or a few vegetables for our lunch. So I'm gonna glaze these. I'll just do one and then the rest of it I'll do off camera, oops and I will mop up all this egg that I spilled. Mistakes always make for good viewing, don't they? Okay, and then I'll do the others. finished pasties. It's zoom in so with the inside. Like I said, it's really, really, really difficult to make gluten-free pastry. It's okay to put it in a tin, but to just free form it like this, it's hard to get it to stay together. But they have. And here is our finished gluten-free 
pasties, our spicy bean pasties. And I think they're looking pretty good. They're nicer to eat when they're still warm, but they've cooled down. Don't eat them when they're fresh out the oven, they will burn your mouth, I promise you. So there we go. There's the finished pasties and they're made of chickpea flour. So slightly lower in carbs, but you could fit this into a low carb diet by only eating maybe half of it and eating the rest with salad. And there's plenty of protein in this chickpea flour as well. Plenty of protein in the beans inside. So good filling veggie pasties, gluten free and really tasty. And I hope you make them and if you do, let me know. Well, I hope you like that very cheap and cheerful recipe of spicy bean pasties. If you like the video, go on, hit the like button because it really helps us grow the channel. Tell me, can you eat gluten? Is there something that you have to make yourself? Because you can't buy it like me. I can't buy gluten-free products very easily here in France, and especially not things like a spicy bean vegetarian pasty. Do you make a vegetarian alternative of anything? Let me know. If you're not a subscriber, we would ask you, please, would you consider becoming one and hitting the little notification bell as well so you don't miss our videos. Just leaves me to say on behalf of Mike and I, thanks for watching. See you again soon. Goodbye for now.